As Anne said, my name is Eloise. I am from Barana Conservancy in Kenya. Um, I am going to talk to you today about Barana Lodge and about Lengishi House, which are two properties on the wider Barana Conservancy landscape. Um, Rich, who was talking about Arajiju earlier, kind of touched on a few things, but um, yeah, I'll try not to repeat ourselves too much. So um, Barana Lodge uh, became a globally uh, long run member in 2015. And we have been a global ecosystem retreat since 2019. Um, so you can see the lodge here on the side of this hill. Um, we This kind of gives you a quick overview of the conservancy. So in 2012, the Lewa Barana landscape, well, kind of the beginnings of the Lewa Barana landscape were formed. Um, Barana introduced black rhino in 2013, some of which were translocated from Lewa. And once the rhino had established their habitats, we dropped the fences between Lewa and Barana in 2014. So the landscape is now home to over 260 black and white rhino with an amazing population of about 60 lion. We've got 14% of Kenya's grevy zebra population and a lot more um, interesting species. So Barana Conservancy is home to three long run members. We've got two GR members, so Brana Lodge and Lengishu, who I'm going to talk to you about today. And then we've got a fellow member, Arijiju, who Rich spoke about earlier. Um, everybody on Barana kind of subscribes to the same sustainable principles of um, local employment, recycling, um, that sort of thing. So the hope is to make Barana Conservancy, along with our kind of surrounding community partners, long run destinations and long run members in the future. Um, we have got over 500 employees on the Conservancy, and that includes the six tourism properties that we've got on Barana. And across all of the Conservancy and all of the properties, we've got about a 70% local employment rate. Um, so I'm going to start talking to you first about Barana Lodge. I'll just give you a quick overview. So Barana is one of the main economic drivers for this landscape. Um, all of the retained earnings are invested back into the core operations costs of Brana Conservancy and um, the different conservation efforts we've got going on beyond Brana as well. So Brana Lodge opened in 1993. It was one of the original um, eco lodges in the area. We have got eight bedrooms and six cottages. Um, we are bound by a joint venture agreement on the number of vehicles that were allowed on the Conservancy. So it's um, it's kind of very low density tourism. We try and have as little an impact on the ecosystem as possible. Um, so that of course means that we are 100% solar powered. We've got an extensive recycling system. We have a zero landfill policy. Um, and we try and make sure that our guests go beyond the game drive. So they aren't spending their entire time in a vehicle. They are getting involved with our rangers, tracking rhino on foot, riding horses, e-biking, fly camping visiting the farm, visiting local communities and schools um, and much more. So we try and make it a bit more of an exciting safari experience. So our challenges, I mean, there are lots, but I'm just going to mention a few of them. Um, so for culture, the main challenge in this in this part of northern Kenya is access to basic health care. Um, we also have kind of teenage pregnancies and period poverty, but especially in the communities that are north of us, they're very remote and they don't necessarily have um, clinics or any kind of healthcare professionals that they could speak to on a regular basis. Um, in terms of community, our main challenge that we've been tackling is the lack of environmental and ecological education. A lot of people who live close to protected areas and close to wildlife um, may or may not have seen a rhino in their lifetime. So it's quite important to make sure that we tackle that head on. Um, and then our challenge with conservation, um, as I mentioned, Barana kind of focuses on rhino conservation, but our real challenges at the moment lie beyond the boundaries of Barana Conservancy. So environmental degradation across parts of this landscape in Northern Kenya and uh, even across the world is one of the most significant challenges to us and our neighbours at the moment. Um, and for commerce, the supply chain in the safari industry is um, pretty opaque in some places. There are quite a lot of different people between the traveller and the place that they're going to visit. Um, so it's quite difficult for properties to get a clear view of um, the guest before they arrive. But also there is a commission taken in each of those steps. So 
Um, our average commission is about 20 to 30 percent. Um, so and this is off our published rack rate. So it's kind of trying to one of the biggest challenges is trying to ensure uh, transparency across this supply chain. So the solutions that we've come up with um, for uh, the kind of healthcare solution is our mobile clinic. So the Barana mobile clinic was started in 2005 in partnership with the Ministry of Health. And it is a clinic which is based out of the back of a Land Rover with two nurses and a driver. And it visits 10 remote communities on a two week rotation. So the clinic provides basic health care, family planning, um, child inoculations, antenatal advice, HIV awareness, health talks and lectures. Um, and this just makes sure that people have a reliable and kind of responsible source for their health care. Um, for the community, we have recently launched the Mazingira Centre. It opened officially in 2022. Mazingira Yetu means our environment in Swahili. And the centre is a conservation education centre, which provides education days for children um, from local schools, as well as adults from local community groups. So we've also got the Mazingira Express, which is a um, modified school bus, which acts as a game drive vehicle for students to go on educated education guided tours around the conservancy. And they touch on a huge array of different subjects, all the way from kind of soil health, all the way up to food chains, wildlife, different species, that sort of thing. Um, so for conservation, we have, um, it's kind of quite a broad or quite a, yeah, quite a complicated um, uh, issue that we're trying to solve, but, um, one of our projects is called the Mayanat Regeneration Project. So Mayanat is a community owned group branch north of us. And um, we provided financial and technical assistance and guidance to, um, to the owners of Mayanat to create um, a land restoration project. So uh, with, the, with the, the people who live on Mayanat, we've created a system of swales which have been designed to capture an estimated 3 million litres in surface runoff water. Um, these swells were built around in about one or two months with the help and input of the local community and the people who live in Mayanat. So the purpose of this was to restore degraded rangeland, repairing erosion um, and increase water infiltration, infiltration, which in turn then will increase ground cover. So the project was launched as a demo site um, and it is about 600 acres, but the hope is that it would expand across Mayanat and even on a wider scale expand across Northern Kenya. The demo site was completed last year um, and we've been involved in maintaining the site, but most importantly, this is a project that is led by the people of Mayanat and it is not something that we have come in, built and left. It is very much something which we hope um, is scalable and is replicable across the landscape. Um, another way that we, uh, or another kind of project, another solution in our conservation bracket is something called share stock. So a lot of private conservancies or private wildlife conservation areas, including Barana, are underutilizing their rangeland. So that then leads to the reduced carrying capacity for wildlife and livestock. But then on the other hand, a lot of community owned land and conservancies suffer from overgrazing, um, which then also reduces the carrying cap capacity for wildlife and livestock. So the idea with share stock is that we combine um, community and private land in a cooperative management plan. So that, um, then it kind of relates to cattle within the wider ecosystem. So traditionally, a lot of the pastoralist communities um, who are our neighbours would have had privately owned uh, but communally managed livestock. But at the moment, livestock is privately owned and privately managed, which in turn leads to overall degradation. So share stock aims to move back to privately owned livestock, which is managed communally, which moves across the landscape together. So um, share stock is a kind of collective ownership model, which simplifies or aims to simplify livestock management, and importantly, gives pastoralist communities fair access to natural capital, which has in the, in historically been a history of conflict. So the aim is to restore degraded rangeland, improve the carrying capacity across the wider ecosystem, generates 
financial gains for the local pastoralist communities and for the livestock owners, but also all of this should hopefully keep the traditional values of these pastoralist communities intact. So in order to kind of test this theory and to test this project, we're using a combination of ecological outcome verification methods, mainly guided by the Savory Institute. Um, and we are using baseline, baseline, sorry, monitoring systems. Um, so we're monitoring water infiltration, bare ground cover or ground cover and bare ground, as well as biodiversity in the soil and in the plants. So this will hopefully make decisions in the, will help us make decisions in the future and prove that livestock can be a force for good in reversing land degradation. So on to commerce, what we have, um, in order to kind of clarify the supply chain in the safari industry, we have replaced the traditional conservation fees or what you'd find in, in national parks as park fees with a minimum 24% contribution to conservation for each guest who stays at Burana Lodge. So for Burana Lodge, we've created an all-inclusive rate and 24% um, of this inclusive rate is invested into a variety of 4C projects across Burana and beyond. And agents then take their commission of the remaining 76%. So this means that in high season, when rates have uh, usually higher, <laughs> um, guests contribute more to the landscape, but importantly, this is then reported with full transparency to each guest who stays at the lodge. Um, and we have done this with help of the long run in the impact bill, which we give to each guest on arrival. So a quick overview of our impact. Um, you can kind of see the amount of, of curatives year to date and immunizations. Um, the mobile clinic travels an amazing amount of kilometers every month. So it really does have a positive impact on people who would otherwise be a little bit too remote for um, repeat healthcare. Uh, the Mavangiri Yeti Center has had 765 students visit this year and 555 adults as part of um, uh, community groups. And for the Mayanat project and Sharesock project, as I mentioned, uh, the Mayanat project we estimate has or holds about 3 million litres of surface runoff each time it rains. And with Sharestock, we've currently got 4,000 head of cattle, but the way this model works, we could scale it up to 25,000 if we need to. Um, so for Barana Lodge, via the 24% contribution to conservation, we this year have um, committed 730,000 or just over $730,000 to the 4C projects across Barana. So Anne, I was going to end there on Barana, um, but Anne has asked me to kind of carry on through. <laughs> and- uh, Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, of course, that's totally fine. Um, so I'm now going to carry on and chat to you all about Lengishu. Um, so Lengishu is also on Barana Conservancy, as I mentioned. It is a global ecosphere retreat accredited in January this year, which we are very proud of. Um, a quick overview of Lengishu. We opened in 2019. It is exclusive use, similar to Arajiju. It's got six bedrooms, so we take a maximum of 12 adults. It is 100% solar powered. Um, as Rich said, a lot of these, a lot of the kind of recycling program or all of the recycling program that we have is based out of the Barana Conservancy headquarters. So um, all of the properties kind of do their recycling through Barana Conservancy. Um, and Lengishu also has a kind of extensive wastewater recycling system. Across Lengishu staff, we've got a 60% local employment rate, with the others being kind of heads of department who have got very specific skills. And we also have a tree planting initiative for staff and guests within the fenced area of Lengishu. So kind of trying to re-green the area with indigenous trees. So the challenges that Lengishu has, um, as Rich mentioned, it's it's kind of a bit complicated because we are part of the main of the wider Barana projects. Um, it's quite hard to kind of pinpoint what we've got as, as Lengishu on its own, um, but I'll kind of talk you through a couple of them. So uh, the culturally, there aren't a huge amount of employment opportunities for local women in the area. Um, and the challenge with community is period poverty in local schools with girls missing five days a month. So, um, you know, you can see how that kind of would affect your schooling career over the course of a year. Um, so conservation wise, as I mentioned, we're part of the larger Barana landscape. 
Um, and then for commerce, which is much more of a kind of link issue scale, we have seen that there are not a huge amount of employment opportunities for local young people. Um, and we've also, similar to Aradiju, found an issue with sustainable suppliers and their consistency. So the solutions to these, culturally, we buy um, beaded items from local women's groups. And this provides income for local women, but it does, it, it kind of keeps their traditional skills alive. And we encourage our guests to go and meet the ladies at the Mazingiri Yetu Center. Um, they learn how to bead, they kind of make beaded items together. Um, community wise, we have started a sanitary pad program for a school called Lokaseru. We're aiming to expand this program to the other schools around Verona Conservancy. Um, but at the moment, we're kind of struggling to find eco-friendly sanitary options. But um, we're doing quite a lot of research into this at the moment, so I'm sure we'll resolve that quite soon. Uh, so for, for the Conservancy, we are... Uh, Lengishu contributes one ninth of the annual core underwriting costs, as Rich mentioned. Um, so that impacts the projects that I was speaking about earlier, as well as um, range of salaries, uh, mobile clinic, that sort of thing. Um, so the solutions that we found for commerce are um, we've created an in-house training program and we take on interns from the local community. Um, and we also plan to partner with Barana Lodge and other properties on the Conservancy to find sustainable suppliers, which would then give us more buying power over suppliers and meet minimum order requirements when necessary. The impact that we've had um, year to date, we have uh, generated over $1,500 for the local women's group in just buying their beaded items alone. For the community, we have given 104 girls a year's worth of sanitary pads um, in only one school. So hopefully this will expand before the end of the year. Uh, for conservation, we uh, generated over $150,000 to uh, Barana Conservancy just in conservation fees of guests staying at Lengishu. So this does not include any kind of outside donations that our guests have been making. Um, and then we have also had 11 interns come through our internship program and go through training within Lengishu House. Um, and that's this year alone. And yeah, with our sustainable supplier initiative, this is very much the beginning. We are kind of pulling our heads together and our efforts together. So again, hopefully this will go from strength to strength before the end of the year. So I hope I've managed to whiz through everything. I feel like it was quite fast, but... <laughs>